PC, accounting for your future. Okay, so welcome to this chapter nine of our paper five study. Is we're going to see how we're going to manage the quality part. So quality is absolutely important to your organisation because if your quality is not very good, for example, the product gets damaged, of course the customer will not buy it. And that's the reason why within most of these organisations nowadays, especially for those manufacturing industries companies, they will have the quality check department to oversee the quality issue. Now, of course, it's the department that is overseeing the issue, that's the department does. Of course, there'll be lots of processes within that department. Now, of course, we are talking about the quality management as the activity here. So activity, talk about the quality uh, management, and then talk about the function, it's the quality control department, and the processes are within that department. So that's the, those are the distinguishments uh, among those three. So in this chapter 9 then, the things that we're going to cover, first of all we're going to cover the TQM model, it's the total quality management, it's all based upon the lean philosophy, or the lean concept, developed by the uh, Japanese firms. So lean concept means our aim for that is we're going to minimise the waste during the production process. And then once we look at the TQM model, the next thing, we're going to look at the 5S model. Again, it's the Japanese concept to reduce the inefficiency and remove the non-value adding activities. And finally, we will take a look at the quality costs. Because you can think about it this way. If your product gets damaged, so what you need to do then is you're going to rework that product before you send that again to the customer. That will cost you money. So those are the three concepts that we are going to look at. So, first of all then, let's have a look at the um, total quality management. I can call it as the TQM for short. So, this is just to be a concept of making sure that the quality of all of these products are good. Because if the quality is not very good, the customer will not buy it. And hence, first of all, we are talking about the quality of the product should be very good. And secondly, this means why we're going to call it as the total quality management. Of the idea behind it is where we're going to group the people within the organisation, the total people within the organisation, to discuss about the quality concept and come up with ways to improve the quality. So we are also talking about the total people within the organisation to think about the quality issues. And that's the reason why within the TQM model, we encourage the quality circle to set up. So quality circle is just to, just to be a group of people sitting together and discussing about the quality issues. And in order to implement this TQM concept, there would be two things that we're going to follow. First of all, we're going to get the things right at the first time. And secondly, based upon that particular perfect or uh, attainable or good target or the good quality standards, we're going to make the continuous improvement based on that. Okay, that's the TQM model, two principles that we are going to do. Think about it this way, if you haven't got the things right at the first time, so that means that you've designed the wrong product, it's a wrong design, and then send that to a customer. Of course, they will not accept your product because you haven't got the things right at the first time. So you cannot make the continuous improvement based on that because you've done the wrong thing at the start. So that's the reason why you cannot, I mean, uh, improve that quite easily. Or I can say that you, you have to spend lots of cost, you have to spend lots of money improving that bit based upon the wrong product that you've got. And hence, let's see some of the examples related to 
how to get the things right at the first time. First of all, related to design, so that means if the design is not correct at the first time, surely the customer will not buy a product. And secondly, during the product production, and that means how you're going to manufacture a product that will minimize the wastes at the first time. Of course, very, very importantly, perhaps you're going to replace your machinery every five or maybe three years. So machine maintenance will be absolutely important in making sure the efficiency during the production process. And also, the getting things right related to sales, because if the customer don't like your product, if you get those feedback instantly, surely you will redevelop your product and provide the correct part to that customer again. So that's related to sales. And also related to the suppliers as well. So for example, you have to set up the supplier quality assurance scheme So in selecting which supplier that you want. So you have to make sure that all of your products, if you're using different suppliers, they will provide the, um, the, 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 the product with uh, the uh, agreed quality standard that you agreed with the suppliers originally. You cannot say that you select that supplier A, but that supplier A has provided you with the low quality of products. That doesn't make sense. So what you have to do, set up the... Uh, uh, quality assurance schemes in selecting different supplies that you want so that uh, you get the things right at the first time. And also related to employees, what we can do is to set up the quality circle. So if we were to set up a quality circle, so that means we're going to group those employees together and then talk about the quality issues of how we can uh, improve that. It's absolutely important that you're going to involve the frontline workers because the frontline workers deal with the day-to-day -day operation of the business. They know exactly how to improve the efficiency during the production process. So get them into the discussion process will be absolutely important key. And also getting things right related to the information system. So information system is just to be, for example, is the systems that's developed by the organisation or perhaps outsource that to a third party IT company who does that for you. So one of the examples I would like to give my students is related to my experience when working as a cat share in many years ago in the supermarket. So um, the customer when buys the pots from that supermarket, they pick up the pots on the second floor and then see that well the pot is at a discount. They pick up that, dis uh, pick up that product and then go to the cat share on the first floor. But when the cat share scan the product's um, code and it presents that on the screen, that's the product is not at a discount. Instead of spending $5 to buy it, you still have to pay for the full price of $20. Of course, quite a lot of these customers will complain about that. Well, you haven't updated your systems at all, so I have to, uh, I mean, wait for your response. For example, please provide me with the response why there'll be no discount because on the second floor there's a discount on there but on the first floor of course there'll be no discount for that. So what we have to do then uh, is we're going to correct this. For example, we're going to engage the supervisor and provide the explanation to different customers about those problems that we've had and that will be a cost to the company. So if you improve that based upon the error that you've made before of course, you have to spend quite lots of money as well as time fixing those. So that's the reason why within a TQM model, all we can say is first of all, we're going to get the things right at the first time. And then based upon that good standard, and we're going to make continuous improvements for that. So that's the idea behind the TQM. So once you look at the TQM model, the next model that we are going to look at related to quality is we're going to focus upon the 5S model, again, is, for, is developed from the Japanese firms. So the first S stands for systematize. So that means, I mean, the Japanese firms will argue that the employees will be motivated or be more efficient when working uh, within the uh, I mean, company uh, if they find that their table 
are very clean and also all of his unneeded tools are removed. So, for example, for the finance department, the financial statements are needed, so we'll put that on the table. But if you think about, well, you've got the last, year, uh, the last five years uh, financial statements, if you present that onto the table, well, that looks a mess. From that perspective, then, all we can say is we're going to remove the unneeded things. Okay. The second S stands for Structurize. So for example, we're going to put all of this pen into the pen container rather than spread over the table. So that means we're going to make sure that everything will go to the right place. That's the structurize. And the third S stands for sanitize. So sanitize means we're going to clean the table and clean the workplace when job is performed. There's no point that uh, we're going to leave it as a mess. So clean the workplace. Next one, standardize. So we're going to make sure that we have developed this standardized policy to make sure all things are sanitized, structurized, and systemized. So policy or consistent policy. should be developed. And then finally, the final S stands for self-discipline. So that means we are going to encourage the employees to make sure that they follow the 5S so that we're going to give them rewards and also setting up some of the performance measurement target. So what do I mean by that is we're going to make sure the employees will stick to the 5S principles above by setting up some of the performance measurement targets or objectives, that kind of thing. So uh, if you follow the 5S model, as you can see, you can motivate the employees and also you can make sure that the quality of the product will be good. Now, of course, we talk about quality. And then one of the important issues we have to consider, especially from the accounting's perspective, and also you will be required to comment on uh, some of the quality issues, quality cost issues, by setting up some of the KPIs related to that. And that's the reason why we are going to look at the concept called quality costs. So the quality costs would be divided into these categories it would be the non-conformance costs. It would be the conformance costs. So, that means, for example, non-conformance costs is the cost incurred if you're not going to comply with the quality standard. So for example, the ISO. Um, if you're not going to comply with the quality standard, you have to incur the costs in fixing those parts. So that is also known as the failure costs. So it would be divided into two it can be internal failure costs. It can also be the external failure costs. So what do I mean by internal failure costs is this. 
before product is finished and send that to a customer. We've identified there will be certain inefficiency that happen during the production process, resulting in the quality of the product may not be good. For example, before we send that to a customer, we find some errors within that product. That's the internal failure cost. If you find, that, find out that error before we send that to a customer, we have to fix that error, so that will cost us money. That's the internal failure cost. External failure cost means outside the organisation, after a customer has received the goods from you and the customer has found out there will be some mistakes within that product and then send back to you and ask you to fix that error or fix that mistake. So if that's the case, that's the external failure cost. You have to spend the money fixing it. Confidence cost, on the other hand, is the cost incurred in making sure that the quality of the pot is good before you send that to a customer. So from that perspective then, we can subdivide it into the prevention costs as well as the appraisal costs. So prevention costs means before the error actually happens, we are going to provide the costs related to training to the employees and making sure that the employees knows exactly how to make a good quality product. Appraisal cost, on the other hand, would be the quality check. Because we are going to appraise the product to see whether or not the quality is good or bad. So we perform the quality checking process and it, I mean, it uh, costs us money. That's the appraisal cost. So that means if you are going to increase your confidence costs, that means you tell the employee how to make the right product and then you quality check your product. So that means your quality must be good and then the failure costs must be lower. So there would be the, um, I mean, it's the negative correlation between the non confidence costs, which is the failure costs, and the confidence costs. So that's the quality cost. Uh, in the exam, what your examiner expect you to do, perhaps is to comment on each of these components within the non confidence as well as the confidence costs and the interrelationship between these two, and also giving you some of the company's information detailing which cost is non confidence cost and uh, which cost is confidence cost, and asking you to do the benchmarking against other companies, for example. So what you need to do then is you need to identify, you need to understand what sort of components will be related to non conformist costs and what sort of components will be related to conformist costs. Okay, so there you have it. Just to recap what we have done today related to quality within the chapter 9. We talked about first of all the TQM model. It's just to be based upon the lean philosophy. So that means we are going to get the things right at the first time and we're going to minimise those inefficiencies. And then we look at the 5S model in trying to see how we're going to better motivate the employees to work better within the organisation and also improve the quality. And finally we talk about the cost of quality including the non confidence costs as well as the confidence costs. And there will be the negative correlation between these two costs. Okay, so there you have it. So that's the end of the chapter 9. I hope you find it useful and look forward to seeing you in the next of our section. APC, accounting for your future.